let's always give peace a chance. It's absolutely necessary because if there is no peace, there is no country. And uh, Nigeria, there is enough for everybody. So let us uh, try to be each other's keeper and also put our own hands on deck to move the country forward. Your Excellency, we have seen some reactions to the subsidy removal. What's your own opinion about this? Well, you know, this subsidy this, uh, issue has been on and on and off and so on. But uh, Mr. President has taken a decision to remove it. And I hope we will all see how to help him to make sure that it succeeds. The next meeting, as, uh, as, as over the years, been very constructive and productive and key outcomes, resolutions and recommendations are translated into brilliant government policies. It is also evident that the task of growing our economy is quite enormous. But you and I ask for it, we can pray for it, we even dance for it, we beg for it. So we have no reason to complain. We must harness the growth potential of Nigeria and bring about serious development to bring us from a potential nation to a pragmatic economic development in a rapid manner. Their expectation is on neck. As stakeholders, and you have the flexibility of using the local government to rapidly develop the infrastructure within the local government areas, to be partial, to govern according to the constitution and the rule of law to defend the nation from terror and all forms of criminality, to promote economic growth and development through job creation, food security, and an end to poverty, to prominently feature women and youth in all our activities, and to take proactive steps such as championing a credit culture to discourage corruption while strengthening the effectiveness and efficiency of various anti-corruption agencies. I also highlighted eight priority areas to which this administration will focus. Security economy, jobs, agriculture, and infrastructure. We have already taken significant steps by ending the first subsidy and unifying the foreign exchange rate. This government will continue to transform our nation's fortunes 
and bring about unprecedented development through good governance. Party APC Senator Adamu Abdullahi. The National Secretary Senator Yola Omishuri. The Chief of Staff Honorable Femi Bajabiamla. Great Nigerian student. Grace. Great Nigerian student. Great. Very good. Welcome. It is a joy to have you around. And particularly today that we are even celebrating more or less a victory mm -hmm. over tyranny and uh, what Nigeria should be. The bill will require some of what you enumerated. We look at it critically. Right. However, if we all believe that education is the greatest weapon against poverty, then we have to invest in it. And that poverty should not prevent anybody, any child, including the daughter or son of a wood seller or bully seller or yam seller from attaining their high standard of education to eliminate poverty. If you eliminate poverty in one family, one single unit, 
you can carry the rest of the wealth with you. I assure you, the objective is not lost. Yes, the student needs uh, to be represented. But if there's anything I last remember, that you are not cohesive too. You fractionized. You are in factions sometimes. So once one person is on the board, another faction will raise the air. So you have to promote unity and stability among each other. You have to employ democratic means honestly and seriously. I can always say uh, anyone who is unable to accept and celebrate a free and fair election does not deserve the joy of victory. So if you follow democratic principles and norms in your various activities and elections, you definitely, we will not give the board an headache. We take a look at that, that inclusion. You know, uh, I'm glad you understand the reason on the subsidy remover. A point of drains, Nigeria tried to draw water from a dry well. <laughs> it's no longer acceptable. It's no longer acceptable. And uh, we equally must not continue to service the smugglers. They take our canteen, tanker, our PMS across the border. We stop that. We put our money where our mouth is. To all of you, uh, you probably might not be born or maybe up to even two years old when we started the struggle for democracy. You are here. You must look forward to leading the country one day. It's through courage, perseverance, commitment, and consistency that you can achieve that goal. I am ready to listen to you any given time, any time that you have complaints, you have your comrade in Gaja. If you cannot locate me, so you can uh, more or less find him. But it's a joy to sign a bill into law. Uh, and we look at the control mechanism of the of the bill.
okay. Uh, and the bill and the board can decide all of that. There's no point in not including you. But the bill is open ended without tenor. Four years university education should be four years unless you are in medicine or other sciences that is longer than that. So the kind of actual strike that we had in the past must not happen again. <laughs> so, we are on this journey together and we are charting the course for your tomorrow, today. Be part of it. Celebrate it, own it, and run with it, because it's your country. You don't have any other nation. To all of you, uh, You represent a diversity of Nigeria. That diversity is only sweet when you own the civic responsibility of non-identity politics. And I assure you, I will work with you. So, and, uh, my national chairman, the national secretary, and many of them are here, bearing witness to a commitment for us to eliminate poverty. We are <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. By reintroducing student loans, and you have done that yesterday, this has gone down very well. It has been very positively received across the broad spectrum of our society. And the direct beneficiaries, the students, made it a very cardinal issue to come here today and express their gratitude to you. Thank you. Congratulate you for the giant strides that you have been taking in the last just two weeks of your presidency. This has been very unprecedented, Mr. President. I now would allow the President of the President, Your Excellency, capacity tested, trusted, dependable, and reliable President of our great country, Nigeria. Before you are uh, the members of National Association of Nigerian Students, headed by myself. My name is Usman Umar Barambu from Gombe State, studying in Federal University, Duse Jigao State. My, from my right hand side, I, Your Excellency, we are here to congratulate you and to thank you 
for what you have been doing to the country since you enter as president of this great country. And to equally thank you for a lot of things. We started by number one, issue of subsidy removal. It takes a great person to take that bold step by removing the subsidy. And we said, we said as students, even when some people confronted us that, no, we need to protest, we said to them, no, that the oil is dry. Baba cannot give what we don't have now. We have to accept the reality and face the challenge squarely so that together we can rescue the country. And we say no. And today we are saying yes to fuel subsidy removal. And we'll stand with it. We'll go with the removal of the subsidy. And to equally thank you for the student loan bill. Like we said to our colleagues, that we have seen a lot of goodies coming as we emerge. And thank God we have started seeing it. Now with this bill, we have the opportunity to get access to fund, to further our education, to fund our education. Uh, uh, last year, I was with the immediate past speaker and chief of staff, one of our own comrade, Femi Baja. Uh, we complained to him that with this bill, now a lot of our institutions will be increasing fees because they will tell that you have access, go and get loan first to pay the fees. Now we are pleading that at least we should have a uniform benchmark. And if they want to increase, they should please carry along the student union government of that school so as to curtail the issue of protesting. Whenever there is protest in the issue of school fees increment, it's because the student union government are not being carried along in the process. Once they have been carried along, we don't think there will be problem. We equally appeal that as we are removing the subsidy, or we say as we have removed the subsidy, we are pleading that buses should be given to most of the higher institutions, if not all, to help us subsidize the transport system of the universities. Then we equally call for more funding of ITF, that's the Industrial uh, Training Fund. We equally call for more percentage, if possible, for TED fund, because Your Excellency, without that TED fund, by now, most of our institutions could have collapsed. They are the people doing almost virtually all the uh, buildings and everything there. But uh, we, we equally seek your, seek your permission and uh, we equally seek your permission on the issue of uh, this uh, very good palliative for our student a very good palliative for our student that will go direct to them. Because most of the times, if it is going through uh, the school management, we used to have issues with them. Uh, as a leader in the struggle, you know that better than us. Greatest Nigerian student. Yes. Are we communicating? Yes. Thank you very much. Then equally, Your Excellency, uh, we want to appeal that this issue of Pension Commission. We saw the police going outside the contributory pension. And we are afraid that probably if it continues, the government will be putting money inside the police pension uh, board, which from what we saw is going to be around a trillion naira. So we are afraid that if we are out of four to a uh, three to four trillion subsidy then we are going to one point something trillion to police uh, pension. I think definitely the burden will still come back as time goes on. So we are appealing to you to look at that uh, issue. Then we are equally appealing that either the MD or the Secretary General, someone with well student unionism experience should be considered, if at all, former NANS official or to be a little bit selfish, former NANS president, to be considered in that appointment, so that at least we will not have much issue if there is something coming up. He knows the terrain, he's familiar with all the challenges. It will be good that for him to solve the issue even before escalating. 
And on that note, we would like to thank you for appointing one of our own, like I earlier said, our father, Comrade Femi Baja, as your chief of staff. Thank you very much. <laughs>
at least it's an interventionist agency, so at least just intervening on the development of the region. So we have different programs. The most important is that these programs must also be in line with Mr. President's vision. So he has asked us to do certain things and get back to him. So <clears throat> once we put that together, we'll get back to him again. Okay. He has also mentioned um, his intention to uh, stop oil um, theft in that region. What is your agency uh, doing to help him in, in this regard? Well, what we need to do is that if we intervene in the areas of underdevelopment, definitely oil theft will also reduce. So we, as an interventionist agency, we are not involved in pipeline security. There are people who are doing pipeline security, and the NMPC have also awarded contract for pipeline security and all that. So for us, it's just to support the youth too. And once we support the youth in time to carry out some engagement program for youth and empowerment program for youth, we believe that, yes, the mindset will also shift. My name is Dr. Sam Obuku. So you've just had uh, an audience with the president, and may we have an idea of what has happened? Well, first and foremost, I think Mr. President was interested in knowing some of the uh, security challenges we have in the state. Uh, the state is always uh, an area where some of these few security challenges come up because a lot of these uh, bandits and kidnappers and the rest of that always target Abuja. They think that's where the money is. So they usually come between our border and Kaduna. They come between our border and Kogi, our border with Benue. You know, so we had a few of some of those issues. In fact, a uh, few days ago, we had almost 20-something uh, people were kidnapped at the main highway coming to Abuja. But God so kind, we were able to get all of them uh, back. You know, and then... Um, Last week, we got some few expatriates again that were kidnapped at, our, at their site, you know, between Garoku and Dari. And uh, again, we were able to get all of them out yesterday. You know, so I'm sure Mr. President got his security report that some of those issues uh, came up. And then there was also uh, another problem within the House of Assembly. I think Mr. President wanted to know more about that. So that's what I used the opportunity to brief him what is really happening. Security is number one on the list of uh, Mr. President, I can tell you. So what assurances are you getting from him uh, tackling the situation? Well, I saw the commitment from his own side because from what you can see while I'm here, there are already some heads of security agencies that are here. Uh, so, and, and he said he's going to discuss with them immediately. And uh, in the past, we had taken joint military operation in the area. And he said that that is also another option that he will look at, you know, and that is uh, the direction that we are getting. May we give you student loan, our program, four years will be four years. You will not stand before four years to graduate in a university. The President, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu, signed into law the student's loan bill. And that student's loans bill, you all know what it entails, what it connotes, the meaning. It, this is a promise made during the presidential campaign by the then candidate, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu, that he will bring back the issue of the student loans issue onto the front burner. And today, that promise he made has been kept. He has just signed that bill into law, which henceforth will allow or enable our indigent students to access the federal government loans to fund their educational pursuit or career. And this is how it's done in other developed climes, other developed societies all over the world. So this is a boom to the, our youths, to our students nationwide. Of course, there are prescribed qualification parameters, and that is the proof of indigenship of whoever is to be a beneficiary. And all the prescribed parameters will be there. Of course, there are committees to be set up the members of committee drawn from various bodies to superintend over the efficient and proficient disbursement of this facility. 
So, once again, I'm sure you'll get the video clips of the president signing the bill just a few minutes ago. So that is being signed into law is already, yes, it has, it has, been, it has been passed by both houses, the Senate and the House of Representatives. So it's just for the, it is when the president does not sign that it goes back into the National Assembly. Yeah, the bill takes effect immediately, but the procedures will be worked out, the committees to superintend and all of that are spelled out. It's tertiary. It's tertiary. Yes, there is an amount, not uh, in terms of the Naira and Kobo, but in terms of percentage of uh, revenue of the Federation. Yeah, and that is also in the bill. We will give you student loan. Our program, four years will be four years. And to say that today what the president has done goes beyond the symbolism. It's a demonstration of intent in terms of how he wants to deal, handle education as he progresses in his presidency. Um, like somebody asked recently about procedures. Once the bill has been signed, that is the most important thing. A bill tells you what should be done. The how of it will be done is what it is going to, we are going to put together. And the good luck is that we have experience already in this area. We already have a federal scholarship board scheme running. But the difference this bill makes is that it's going to be a loans board so that people that don't even have, for whatever reason, don't qualify, could be able to apply for a loan. And I'm very sure the country has learned from recovery rates of loans. And the experience we had will be able to guide how this federal the Students' Loans Board will work. I want to congratulate the President and most importantly, congratulate us Nigerians because what we have now is that nobody should say money did not allow him to go to school. That opportunity will be there, it will be inclusive and it will be equitable. Well, first and foremost, like I said, an act tells you what to do. The how will be done in terms of procedure. For now, we don't have amount for loans because we've not been given loans. What we have now is grants, which are scholarships, and we already have amounts for those. We have a national scholarship award for which we give every beneficiary 250,000 a year. The last administration in the last two years approved a scheme called revitalization of t-shirts. And in that scheme is to provide a hundred thousand naira for every student studying education in colleges of education and 150,000 to students studying education in universities. Unfortunately, there are no adequate budgetary provisions to pay everybody. So for the past two years, we've, been succeed we've succeeded in paying final year students. And with this loan spot, it's going to be a lot easier. And like you know, a loan can only have a cap that if you are looking for a loan for first degree, you can't get more than this because we have to think of repayment in terms of your ability to repay and the number of years it will take you to repay. It's not going to be, uh, it's, it's a, so to say, use banker's language, it will be an interest-free loan. It's not a loan that you say you pay any interest on, no. Thank you. And, and I think this is where members of the press need to help us. We have a constitution that says education, secondary, is on the concurrent list. Primary is completely local government level. But federal government cannot fold its hands and watch the other levels degrade. And that is why we have a UBEC that takes care of the first nine years of school. We've had issues with UBEC in the sense that what UBEC says is gov federal government is bringing X amount, state government bring this amount. A number of state governments were unable to do that until the former president negotiated or discussed with the governors and said, look, you have some reform from Paris Club. Let's put this as your UBEC contribution. Where I'm going is that we, 
at the federal level, as much as possible, we are ready to give the financial resources technical support. But the state governments, too, should also be ready to match us, even if it's midway. We continue in that sensitization. We continue in that uh, moral suasion to make them do what they are supposed to do. But of course, like you know, in terms of even secondary education, we also have our own unity schools for which we are 100% responsible for and we are providing that layer of education. So for us to make the state governments and local government do the same is to continue doing sensitization, talking to them, getting their buy-in. In a democracy that we are in, you can't force anything down the truth of He just to come and say hello to my father. I've congratulated him before this time and to give a word of support for what he has achieved and what he has done so far. And I know that Nigeria had changed. Nigeria had turned 360 degrees in the positive direction. The, when, when I'm speaking about the president, I'm speaking from a personal point of view. I will do everything, I can stake everything to make my father, in quote, succeed. And that is a promise I had given to myself and a promise I've given to him. Oil theft will be stopped. There will be zero oil theft in the Niger Delta. Inshallah. Excellency. Uh, you have just visited the president. Uh, May we know why you're here? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, a number of reasons. First of all, um, the president and I are old friends. He's my brother. Uh, we've been friends since his first term as governor of Lagos State when I was a banker. And I have not seen him since the elections. I wanted to give him time to settle down. Um, so the first reason was to come and congratulate him formally. But also, I wear many caps. Uh, I wear the cap of an economist, so I came to thank him for the steps he has taken to put this economy on course. As you know, many of the issues that we have been talking about, uh, the subsidy that has caused a hemorrhage on the fiscus, the multiple exchange rate regimes, and so on, uh, these are issues that I have personally been talking about for a long time. And I'm happy that on his very first day, he has addressed these issues and the markets are happy. And it is important uh, when the government does the right thing for us to give them feedback. It's not always uh, when they do a wrong thing that you complain. So he has started on such a strong footing as far as the economy is concerned that we have to come and support and encourage uh, that we continue along that path and be advocates for the policies he has pursued. Uh, the second cap I wear is that of the Horejo Tabita Pulaku, and I'm therefore concerned about the issue of uh, herdsmen 
pharma clashes and he's also concerned and we discussed um, steps that will need to be taken to begin to look at some of those issues but in particular um, I came to appeal to him on the case of the 37 herdsmen who were bombed by the Air Force in Nasarawa State uh, a few months ago uh, which uh, we wrote a letter to President Buhari on uh, and we have now written a reminder because it's a matter we do not want to be swept under the carpet and um, the president has asked me again to send him that letter and I'm sure that he will look into, into the matter. Uh, the, the third major issue we discussed was the issue of poverty, especially in northern Nigeria, the questions of out-of-school children, girl-child education, uh, and, how, uh, um, and, and his thoughts on that matter. And this is a big priority for him. Um, and we would be, uh, again, uh, continuing with the conversation to see how we can help with ideas for how to address these issues because uh, without education in the north and without educating the girl child you are not going to have um, uh, uh, an amelioration of the extreme poverty and insecurity in the north so it's really about the economy about the people uh, about his policies to encourage him and to also uh, make it clear that uh, at any point in time uh, we are here uh, to advise uh, and and he knows that and i'm just one phone call away and I'm very, very happy uh, to have seen him, to see the mindset, and I wish him all the best. Well, I, th I think the, the president has already started. Ours is to back him and to support his actions for the betterment of the country. So for now, uh, the parliament on resumption will also lend our voice to what we have seen so far. He has taken the right steps. The, stock market is rising and a lot of people are very excited with the steps he has taken so far and we are also very happy and there is renewed hope not just in terms of the economy but in terms of the stability of the country it will affect all facets of life including security so i applaud him and we thank god for him and we welcome the development so far as the senate of the federal republic of nigeria ours is to back him with necessary legislations and also to bring to the fore uh, most of the things that are happening in our various communities through motions and, uh, and observations so, so that the government can take more action since we are closer to the grassroots. Your Excellency, I can uh, tell you a lot of expectations from Nigerians. So what should uh, Nigerians expect from uh, the 10th Assembly under your chairmanship? Well, I think they expect robust legislative de debates. They expect, uh, uh, they expect us to uh, to focus on Nigeria and they expect us to help Mr. President to take decisions that will improve the lots of Nigerians. They expect us to take decisions that will ensure total empowerment of Nigerians. Above all, they want improvement in the economy. They want to see palliatives. They want everything about uh, the well-being of Nigeria to be taken more seriously, just like in the, it's in the Constitution that the primary purpose of government is about security and welfare of lives of the people. And once we take care of those things, then we would have met their expectations. But I assure you that we are poised to do so. Poised from common sense. On common sense. <laughs> but uh, can we know what uh, actually transpired? I am a village man from Oshun State. And uh, now that the president is in the city, I think I should come and see the way he lives. And uh, when I got to his house, they say he's in the office. And I decided to come and say hello to him in the office. I see he can, he can be very busy. And I, I asked him, when will he create a, a Camp David in Nigeria where a president can be running to, to rest? So I met him a little relaxing with jokes and chat, and we pray for Nigeria. God answer the prayer. So you have come a long way with Ashiwaju that through the struggles and then leading to this uh, success, emerging as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. What do you think people should expect from this administration? People will expect the rejigging of our party, the APC, and 
to re-establishing good governance in Nigeria. And it will go on record that APC brings good governance to Nigeria. I guess as an elder, you give him some advice. Uh, it's not yet time for advice. We are watching him do good. Uh, Nigerians are happy. By the time we, we hear any complaints, that the time will be ripe enough for giving the president Make advice. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. 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 So how do you assess? Oh, I merely watch the perception of the country. Very excellent. People are happy with him. And that's why I... Over the years, been very constructive and productive and key outcomes, resolutions and recommendations are translated into brilliant government policies. It is also evident that the task of growing our economy is quite enormous, but you and I ask for it, we can pray for it, we even dance for it. We beg for it. So we have no reason to complain. We must harness the growth potential of Nigeria and bring about serious development to bring us from a potential nation to a pragmatic economic development in a rapid manner. Their expectation is on neck. As stakeholders, And you have the flexibility of using the local government to rapidly develop the infrastructure within the local government areas to be partial to govern according to the constitution and the rule of law. To defend the nation from terror and all forms of criminality. To promote economic growth and development through job creation, food security, and an end to poverty. to prominently feature women and youth in all our activities, and to take proactive steps such as championing a credit culture to discourage corruption while strengthening the effectiveness and efficiency of various anti-corruption agencies. I also highlighted eight priority areas to which this administration will focus. Security, economy, jobs, agriculture, and infrastructure. We have already taken significant steps by ending the first subsidy and unifying the foreign exchange rate. This government will continue to transform our nation's fortunes and bring about unprecedented development through good governance. If you agree with me uh, that um, maintaining multiple exchange rates uh, has not been the best for the country, and any time you create room for arbitrage, people take advantage of it. So you saw situations where 
people can sit in the comfort of their homes and make hundreds of millions of naira simply because central bank allocated dollars to them at uh, the official uh, window and they will just round trip it and sell at the black market window. So I think it's something that we have been shying away from. I call it subsidy. Some people call it uh, something else, but it's subsidy. Anytime you subsidize, particularly if you are subsidizing consumption rather than production, it gives you the effect that you never really anticipated. Uh, it is also good news that as we are converging all the exchange rates, that our production and our um, uh, levels of um, export are going up. Uh, now, if you, I know where your question, how, where your question is going. So, what happens to the money that the central bank makes, or is going to make from this convergence, vis-à-vis -vis the um, receipts from oil proceeds? Don't also forget that for the first time in this country, our total debt has crossed a hundred billion dollars. I think it's about $104 billion. We are using close to 120% that has just been reduced to 85% of our total revenue to service debt. So we have a lot of obligations. It's a very difficult time to be in government. So I believe that with the transparency that is being shown and then you can actually ask questions, that we are at that point where we can say uh, the economic uh, situation will get better, but it gets difficult because it gets, uh, before it gets better. So the challenges are going to be there, but over time, consistency will lead us to the promised land. Specifically on the issue of national salaries, income and wages commission, NEC had uh, received recommendations uh, on the various ways and means that this, the, the country can use whatever increases that we have in the revenue to mitigate the uh, impact that is going to make on the lives of our workers and all those people involved. And so they recommended, and they gave us a scenario recommending that there should be an adjustment, consequential adjustment, estimated at 702 billion to 919 million Eight naira, as part of uh, the allowances that should be given as petroleum allowance to all workers, and as well as a 23 or to 45 billion month monthly uh, offer to cushion the effect to workers. There were also discussions about the fact that post deregulation, we've seen a big drop in the consumption of PMS in the country. The drop has gone from um, 66 million liters a day to about 41 million liters a day. But in the last one week or so, we began to see a creep up. And there were discussions around the fact that all of us realized that we were subsidizing all our neighbors from Cameroon to Ghana to Bene to Chad to Niger. We looked at the pricing before the regulation in those countries, when we were selling for about 195, they were selling for about 300, 395. Now we're selling for upwards of 550 naira per liter. And suddenly the prices in those countries have jumped up to 700 and 800 naira per liter. And we wondered why would those prices jump up? But obviously the fact is that those countries will continue to depend on us for PMA supply because most of them do not have the wherewithal in terms of foreign exchange to even import uh, PMS. So regardless of whether we regulate or not, which we have done, we will continue to see smuggled PMS across the borders. One of the issues that we discussed today is palliative measures to mitigate the effect of the petroleum subsidy uh, through the NGKS program. You, as you are aware, NGKS program it's a program that I've started 2021, 
running up to 2024, and then is to provide uh, some emergency and palliatives, social needs on so many issues ranging from small farmers holders, MSMEs, and other interventions. It's a 750 million USD from the World Bank, and uh, it has commenced a long time ago. And some of the recommendations that were made include the state case platforms have a strong capacity to handle the implementation of palliatives to the new and existing poor and vulnerable individuals, household and farmers, local economy operators in the country. Additional funding can be sourced from the federal government, World Bank, development partners, as well as Nigerian private sector. In specific, the World Bank can be approached for additional financing on NGK's program. Discussion can start as soon as possible. <laughs> Excellency. Mr. President. Thank you very much. Uh, a number of reasons. First of all, um, the president and I are old friends. He's my brother. Uh, we've been friends since his first term as governor of Lagos State when I was a banker. And I have not seen him since the elections. I wanted to give him time to settle down. Um, so the first reason was to come and congratulate him formally. But also I wear many caps. Uh, I wear the cap of an economist, so I came to thank him for the steps he has taken to put this economy on course. As you know, many of the issues that we have been talking about, uh, the subsidy that has caused a hemorrhage on the fiscus, the multiple exchange rate regimes, and so on, uh, these are issues that I have personally been talking about for a long time. And I'm happy that on his very first day, he has addressed these issues and the markets are happy. And it is important uh, when the government does the right thing for us to give them feedback. It's not always uh, when they do a wrong thing that you complain. So he has started on such a strong footing as far as the economy is concerned that we have to come and support and encourage uh, that we continue along that path and be advocates for the policies he has pursued. Uh, the second cap I uh, wear is that of the Horejo Tabita Pulaku, and I'm therefore concerned about the issue of uh, herdsmen farmer clashes, and he's also concerned. And we discussed um, steps that will need to be taken to begin to look at some of those issues. But in particular, um, I came to appeal to him on the case of the 37 herdsmen who were bombed by the Air Force in Nasarawa State uh, a few months ago, uh, which uh, we wrote a letter to President Buhari on. Uh, and we have now written a reminder because it's a matter we do not want to be swept under the carpet. And um, the President has asked me again to send him that letter, and I'm sure that he will look into, into the matter. Uh, the, the third major issue we discussed was the issue of poverty, especially in northern Nigeria, the questions of out-of-school children, girl-child education, uh, and, how, uh, um, and, and his thoughts on that matter. And this is a big priority for him. Um, and we would be, uh, again, uh, continuing with the conversation to see how we can help with ideas for how to address these issues because uh, without education in the north and without educating the girl child, you are not going to have um, uh, uh, an amelioration of the extreme poverty and insecurity in the north. So it's really about the economy, about the people, uh, about his policies to encourage him and to also uh, make it clear that uh, at any point in time, 
uh, we are here uh, to advise, uh, and, and he knows that, and I'm just one phone call away. And I'm very, very happy uh, to have seen him, to see the mindset, and I wish him all the best. Well, I, th I think the, the president has already started. Ours is to back him and to support his actions for the betterment of the country. So for now, uh, the parliament on resumption will also lend our voice to what we have seen so far. He has taken the right steps. The stock market is rising and a lot of people are very excited with the steps he has taken so far. And we are also very happy. And there is renewed hope, not just in terms of the economy, but in terms of the stability of the country. It will affect all facets of life, including security. So I applaud him and uh, we thank God for him and we welcome the development so far. As the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, ours is to back him with military legislations and also to bring to the fore uh, most of the things that are happening in our various communities through motions and, uh, and observations so, so that the government can take more action since we are closer to the grassroots. Your Excellency, I can uh, tell you a lot of expectations from Nigerians. So what should uh, Nigerians expect from uh, the 10th Assembly under your chairmanship? Well, I think they expect robust legislative de debates. They expect, uh, uh, they expect us to, uh, to focus on Nigeria. And they expect us to help Mr. President to take decisions that will improve the lots of Nigerians. They expect us to take decisions that will ensure total empowerment of Nigerians. Above all, they want improvement in the economy. They want to see palliatives. They want everything about uh, the well-being of Nigeria to be taken more seriously, just like in the, it's in the Constitution that the primary purpose of government is about security and welfare of lives of the people. And once we take care of those things, then we would have met their expectations. But I assure you that we are poised to do so. <laughs> but uh, can we know what uh, actually transpired? I am a village man from Oshun State. And uh, now that the president is in the city, I think I should come and see the way he lives. And uh, when I got to his house, they say he's in the office. And I decided to come and say hello to him in the office. I see he can, he can be very busy. And I, I asked him, when will he create a, a Camp David in Nigeria where a president can be running to, to rest? So I met him merely to relax him with jokes and chat and we pray for Nigeria. God answer the prayer. So you have come a long way with Ashiwaju uh, through the struggles and then leading to this uh, success, emerging as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. What do you think people should expect from this administration? People will expect the rejigging of our party, the APC, and the re-establishing good governance in Nigeria. And it will go on record that APC brings good governance to Nigeria. I guess as an elder, you give him some advice. Uh, it's not yet time for advice. We are watching him do good. Uh, Nigerians are happy. By the time we, we hear any complaints, that the time will be ripe enough for giving the president Make advice. Thank you very much. How do you assess? Oh, I merely watch the perception of the country. Today I came to brief the president about some continental and subcontinental bodies. You know, I'm the ECOWAS mediator for Mali, and I'm the chair of uh, the West African Elders Forum. So there are certain issues bordering on the continent and the sub-region that I discuss with uh, various presidents. We'll try our best 
to also make laws that will move forward and encourage foreign direct investment into the country. The current administration has brought about the acronym of renewed hope. And I think this Senate will join in ensuring a total renewal hope for Nigerians where they seem to have been no hope. I had the opportunity of serving as a governor and I warned my people who work with me that I, 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 I do not still believe in politically motivated infrastructure. Therefore, the 10 Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria will ensure very serious oversight functions. We shall carry out very serious oversight functions to make sure that we do not waste the resources of the country. Of the country. We will put members of the executive on their toes, particularly the ministers, when they are ready to work, when they are appointed. We will follow project by project and also we will do our best in terms of our preparation. We will not have any delay. I want to plead with you, distinguished senators, to permit me to offer special commendations to the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces for the bold step he has so far taken, particularly in the issue of subsidy. If it requires legislative backing, we shall give. We must begin to produce one fuel in Nigeria. We must begin to encourage production of diesel and others in this country. And of course, if the stories so far are true, that we used to have 69 million barrels a month, and we are now having about 13 or 15 million barrels. That will show that we are subsidizing all the consumption going on in our neighboring countries, with which we can no longer continue with our very lean resources. So we applaud the federal government for such steps. oil theft and vandalization in the Niger Delta. We are going to work with NNPC, PCL, and the IOCs to make sure 
that oil theft is brought to zero. I also want to say that oil theft is encouraged by the military. The military is at the center of oil theft. And we have to make this uh, very, very clear to the Nigerian public. 99% of oil theft can be traced to the Nigerian military, the Army and the Navy especially. The Army and the Navy intimidate the civil defense who are by status the people who are supposed to uh, guard these pipelines. They receive a lot of money from an NPC, PCL, and the IOCs. And just across the corner, you will see a houseboat, a few meters from the houseboat, you will see an oil bunkering refinery or tapping directly from oil well earth. It is very pathetic now. What is happening in the Niger Delta in the past eight years was unprecedented in the history of oil production anywhere in the world. The vandals do not only attack the pipelines. They have migrated from the pipeline and have gone directly to the oil well heads. And they take directly from the oil well heads. The president is a strong president. He's a commander in chief of the armed forces. He's going to take decisive action to get these rotten eggs. It's not the old army and the navy. There are a few who have this entitlement mentality. A better person. I get power person. I get people where they up. We go cover me. The president is going to remove them and make it possible for the people of this country to benefit. For instance, uh, Emefule is gone. <laughs> Bawa is gone. So more heads will roll. Those who are standing as an impediment to the good and progress of this country, the president will not dally dally with them. He will not do CCCC with them. He's going to put and kick them out. And when he does that, we will have the unfettered power, encouragement to get rid of oil theft, which all my brothers in the Niger Delta, all of us have agreed. He just to come and say hello to my father. I've congratulated him before this time. And to give a word of support for what he has achieved and what he has done so far. And I know that Nigeria had changed. Nigeria had turned 360 degrees in the positive direction. The, when, when I'm speaking about the president, I'm speaking from a personal point of view. I will do everything, I can stake everything to make my father, in quote, succeed. And that is a promise I had given to myself and a promise I've given to him. Oil theft will be stopped. There will be zero oil theft in the Niger Delta. Extremely positive step taken by this administration at this very, very early stage of its existence. It will go a very, very long way, probably beyond what you are making imagine today. 
you know, to alleviate the suffering that children, our children, those that are unfortunate, particularly those that are fortunate to have parents that are well to do. This bill is virtually guaranteeing every child of this country an opportunity to get good education. We support it and uh, we we'll stand with the president shoulder to shoulder, you know, in ensuring that this bill, its implementation becomes easy and becomes a duty that every person involved with government and support for our great party government will be sure it succeeds. I assure you, the objective is not lost. Yes, the student needs uh, to be represented. But if there's anything I last remember, that you are not cohesive too. You fractionized. You are in factions sometimes. So once one person is on the board, another faction will raise the air. So you have to promote unity and stability among each other. You have to employ democratic means honestly and seriously. I can always say uh, anyone who is unable to accept and celebrate a free and fair election does not deserve the joy of victory. So if you follow democratic principles and norms in your various activities and elections, you definitely, we will not give the board an headache. We take a look at that, that inclusion. You know, uh, I'm glad you understand the reason on the subsidy remover. A point of drains, Nigeria tried to draw water from a dry well. <laughs> it's no longer acceptable. It's no longer acceptable. And uh, we equally must not continue to service the smugglers. They take our canteen, tanker, our PMS across the border. We stop that. We put our money where our mouth is. To all of you who uh, are you probably might not be born or maybe up to even two years old when we started the struggle for democracy. You are here. You must look forward to leading the country one day. It's through courage perseverance, commitment, and consistency that you can achieve that goal. I am ready to listen to you 
any given time, any time that you have complaints, you have your comrade in Gaya. If you cannot locate me, so you can uh, more or less find him. But it's a joy to sign a bill into law. Uh, I we look at the control mechanism of the of the bill. Okay. Uh, And the bill and the board can decide all of that. There's no point in not including you. But the bill is open ended without tenor. Four years university education should be four years unless you are in medicine or other sciences that is longer than that. So the kind of actual strike that we had in the past must not happen again. <laughs> so, we are on this journey together and we are charting the course for your tomorrow, today, be part of it, celebrate it, own it, and run with it, because it's your country. You don't have any other nation. To all of you, uh, you represent a diversity of Nigeria. That diversity is only sweet when you own the civic responsibility of non-identity politics. And I assure you, I'll work with you. So, and, uh, my national chairman, the national secretary, and many of them are here, bearing witness to a commitment for us to eliminate poverty. We have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fundamental Bosa for the President. Bosa! 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 Corona for his enemy. Corona, Corona, Corona. I think it shows that the, the National Assembly has really arrived. We had perhaps the most, um, it was really a tough fight. Uh, democracy was at, at play, people voted their cautions, and in the end, it's clear that um, the overwhelming majority voted to ensure that every part of the country has a sense of belonging. And uh, all sentiments, are uh, well now reflected. I think that, that statement was boldly made by senators who listened to um, the aspirations, the feelings, the sentiments of their various constituents. Um, for example, um, Amen Lawa's decision not to contest was for me a bold statement in acknowledging that people have to sacrifice for the unity of the country. And um, 
But like in any democracy, people will have different way of reasoning, which has place why some people still fight the contest. And if the vote shows that may overwhelming majority favor the um, God will acquire you. And um, I also listen to his comments, and I think it captures the feelings of many. And um, it is now time to get back to work. Uh, a lot of uh, tough times ahead, and uh, Nigerians expect us not to join them in lamenting, but to find solutions. Now, this is the sweet part, what we've done today. The challenge is what we now use the office to do for Nigeria and for Nigerians. And uh, I think we are all cautious of that. Uh, for me, it would be worth my while to sit anywhere now if my sitting is not going to add value or have positive impact in the way in which, you know, when it comes to the delivery, the deliverables to the average Nigerian person. Have spent all my life on the side of the people. So I'm happy with the outcome and uh, I also don't think that even the man who lost you should, should have any ill feeling because once you go for a contest, there are two possible outcomes. You either win or you lose. If you don't want to go through the emotional pain of losing, then don't attempt to contest. Uh, because even if you were two angels, only one angel is good to match. So I think it was a good day. It was a good day. I can assure you, I will put, uh, bring all that uh, I've gotten through uh, so many years of uh, exposure to legislature. <clears throat> I'll bring that into play. I'll bring, I'll bring, I'll bring that into practice to make sure that uh, we make the. Uh, uh, the next, I mean, the 10th Senate, uh, the most productive in history. In, well, because I'm going to work, you know, in the most conductive, uh, I mean, uh, conducive atmosphere that uh, we shall create, you know, and uh, we'll be able to work uh, together with my, uh, with, the, with the Senate President, indeed, the entire uh, membership of the Senate in a way that uh, will make this 10th uh, Senate most pro productive. The emergency is God's will, and of course, we also work very, very hard. Uh, and uh, this emergency is for the stability of the country, is for national unity, is for inclusiveness, is for balancing. And so uh, I think the hand of God uh, uh, are there. It is um, he's a fantastic uh, person, well schooled, experienced and knowledgeable in the, the, the business of legislature. So we look forward to having a robust tent Senate that will cooperate with the executive uh, when the need arises. Thank you so much. You're welcome.